Hi Topas. Hi Aditya. Uh, we have in a lot of professions certain fixed patterns of working. For example, when there's a business communication, a letter is written in a standard format, or when we send an invite, it's usually drafted in that you know a uh, very typical fashion. which is popularly known as templates yep which we have even in microsoft word or mm. any of these powerpoints and all where we get you know a standard template to start off with which saves a lot of time yep. in making your project or product or whatever similarly in music uh i've seen you and many other musicians often talk about templates in various daws so how exactly does one go about it how does it help can everybody follow the same uh, template or is it customizable etc etc can you please throw some light on it yeah sure um templates are a beautiful way to getting your things done as soon as you launch your app um how to go about doing it is very simple every major daw that people use today offers you to save templates your own uh, templates that reflect your workflow and you can customize your daw to uh, to perfectly be like what you want it to be um there are many advantages to using templates while working professionally the biggest advantage is let's say i i have a melody in mind and i want to put it down in my daw i i need to sing something and i want to strum a guitar so if i open if i'm not using templates and if i open logic or any daw for that matter cubase pro tools i you, i open my favorite daw it's going to throw me a default template which won't have a single track which won't be record enabled which won't have my preferences about the zoom about the colors about the levels about the plugins it won't have any of my choices so before even i can get down to recording that melody i'll be wasting a lot of time creating tracks inserting instruments setting the tempo setting the zoom setting the colors and everything by the time i'm done doing all of that i probably forgotten the melody i cannot work without templates it's very efficient it's very necessary that when you launch your daw you are ready to make music correct uh, by any chance do we have any of these doors uh, have a jazz template or a rock template or or do we have these doors give that or can the user make these for his own creation every door has uh, uh, supplies typical standard templates but that doesn't mean that those templates are, templates are going to work for you uh, every user's requirement is different for me a jazz music piece might be different from what you conceive it to be hip hop might be different than what you conceive it to be so i really recommend to create your own template which uh, follows your workflow everybody's requirements is different and nobody should follow somebody else's template okay so why don't we take a look at how do you go about making a template yes sure let's start by creating an empty new session and add a track in the track load your favorite instrument like a piano or a pad or a string pad whatever you want anything that uh, you know launches as soon as you launch the template and you can get to playing your music instantly so in this case let's just launch a standard ep and uh, add a standard reverb to it i remember temp templates save the entire state of the session for you to launch it any time uh for every new session so uh plugins eq zoom levels tools preferences everything gets saved so a reverb with an ep sounds good let's label the track ep okay once this is done let's uh, set some preferences first is file project settings audio in which we'll set the sample rate um click on the sample rate drop down and choose whichever you want in this case let's just uh, go with 48 after this is done um one other very important thing uh, is uh, uh synchronization settings if you are scoring for film or tv you'll find those here file project settings synchronization and uh, the bar position and the smt i usually like my sessions to start at the third bar so that it gives me a buffer of two bars when i'm bouncing my tracks for for the mix and uh, i want my third bar to play at 01 hours 
as a default sorry yeah that's right uh, starting at 1 hour uh, as a default obviously this changes if my movie has a different time code and uh, uh, relative to this please do not forget to change the settings over here in the movie synchronization settings uh, if my session is starting at 1 hour then I also want my movie to start at 1 hour or else when I import the movie it will go someplace where I can't find it sorry again 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 yeah okay so these are your synchronization settings again file project settings synchronization this is the tab you set your bar and your uh, time code of course not to mention your frame rate that you want to work on 24 25 your sync mode and your movie settings synchronization settings once uh, this is done then some small things but very important to me in my workflow um, is let's go to the toolbar uh, this this these three icons that you see over here are the way your mouse behaves with a modifier key and uh, gives you tools uh, uh, at your command. The first one is obviously the pointer tool, which is default. This is the one you see. The middle one uh, is uh, invoked when you press the command key. And uh, I usually like the scissors over there. And the last one is the one uh, assigned to your right click of the mouse or your two finger click if you're using a trackpad. And I, I like the marquee tool over there, like that see with the right click okay once that is done let's move on to the metronome the metronome uh, when you start a session and you want to record a part and you hit the metronome button and switch it on most times it hits you in the face because you're monitoring loud and and the metronome just hits you in the face I mean it can throw any musician off his guard so uh, the same thing file project settings metronome over here let's just switch it on play okay that's a little dull little sharper and a little softer that's just about right so there the metronome settings are done you can also uh, have the metronome on or off for your template I I like to have it off for obvious reasons um, then let's move on to the global tracks followed by the the individual track headers the global track when you click this button you see the global tracks now you obviously you know what are global tracks they are a bunch of uh, uh, tracks that 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 run the session the master information the markers the signature the tempo the movie now let's get rid of the stuff we don't want for example I'll, let's say I don't want the arrangement I'll hide it I don't want okay let's keep the marker I don't want the signature track so I'll hide the signature let's resize the tempo and right click and let's select movie we'll add a movie track we'll rearrange the movie over here and resize it that's nice so the global tracks are set finally uh, let's move on to the the individual track header now in logic 10 um, you know they've given a bunch of extra icons they've given a volume and a fader uh, a volume fader and a pan send control we want to get rid of some of this stuff so that when we uh, um, so that you know it doesn't take up much of real estate screen real estate right click track header components let's get rid of uh, the icons let's get rid of the control bar surf control surface bars uh, I'd like to see colors. Where are colors? Uh, show track color bars. That's nice. We can get rid of uh, the volume and the pen. That's nice. Simple. You can also add protect, uh, freeze, whatever you want to add. It's all here. So you want to see the protect button. So here's the lock. So this is good. And uh, so now every track you create in this session is going to uh, you know remain with these settings once that is done let's move on to the mixer from the view menu open the mixer 
and when you drag this up you see that it's taking up a lot of space from your range you can hardly see any tracks over here so I'm going to get rid of certain stuff that I do not need obviously it's up to you what you want and what you don't want I usually don't use these uh, uh, channel strip settings in the mixer I use them over here so in the mixer I'm going to get rid of them by two there are two ways you can uh, customize them one is from the view menu channel strip components the other is just by simply right clicking over here so let's say again I don't want the control surface bars I don't want uh, the settings menu I don't want the new gain reduction meter I certainly don't want the icons I guess that should be fine and yeah see so much better already next you see all these buttons over here uh, these are all the channels and the type of tracks that you want to see in the mixer I don't want to see my media if I'm not using external media I don't want to see them I don't want to see the master I don't want to see the input I don't want to see the buses auxes are fine instruments audio and of course the output the main stereo output over here uh, simple options single is it'll just show you the track uh, followed by the chain um, that is selected in the arrange the middle one which says tracks shows you all the tracks that are in the arrange and all will show you everything everything that's in the environment everything in the, the signal flow tracks the auxes the buses everything so we'll, I, I usually like to be over here and the settings over here. The last two buttons are the, the fat <laughs> faders and the thin faders. I prefer the thin ones. You can fit in more in this much space. Okay, so the mixer tracks are set. One, uh, one, one, one additional thing though. I like to have my master output over here in the arrange so that uh, it's always easily accessible to me without having to open the mixer page. So I'll right click on the main output channel and just select create track. There you go. I have my master channel output here. And uh, let's hide the mixer. Next, on the output channel, let's insert a metering plugin. A default, I, a default metering plugin that comes with logic. A brilliant one which is multimeter. Of course, you're free to use any of the third party meters. Uh, that you might have and now uh, let's get to the transport bar and the toolbar display um, I don't like this upper 10% of the logic window it, there are too many buttons that distract me I'm someone who uses a lot of key commands so if you are like me you'd you'd want to get rid of all these buttons uh, the way to do that is go to the view menu and say customize control bar and display you've got a million options over here so you can get rid of everything or add a bunch of uh, other things to to crowd it up even more I'm gonna get rid of uh, these buttons over here and uh, these ones over here so let's start uh, you know getting rid of them all of this I don't need nothing the replace button no I don't need uh, I don't need the master volume and uh, the transport the LCD okay the rest is okay much cleaner right uh, if you're happy with this uh, that's fine if uh, not you can go even a step further and get rid of the whole thing the whole top uh, display altogether uh, and I'm just gonna show you because I prefer that I'm just gonna say hide control bar there it's gone but I certainly need my uh, display my digital display to keep track of where I am in the session so I'll just open up a floating transport bar which you can access from here window open transport float there and now I can just resize that thing this is perfect and we are now ready to save the template before saving the template please make sure that uh, uh, all your settings are correct double check them uh, don't leave out anything uh, you can do a bunch of additional settings including the zoom controls the the horizontal zoom the locators over here if you want a cycle mode enable every thing that you do can be saved in a session so that they're just you know all it's just there when you load the session uh, do not forget to select the instrument track and record arm it 
so that when you load the session, the instrument is ready for you to play. Now let's save it. File, save as template, and uh, uh, it, it'll go to your default user library project templates where it uh, resides. It is very important for the templates to reside in this particular place. Do not save it anywhere else or else it won't show up when you load up Logic. So we'll just rename this as my template and overwrite it. It's fine. Uh, remember one thing, saving a template is different from saving a session. We are not saving a session over here because we're not working on a session, we are saving a template, which we've already done. So because when I close this session, it's going to ask me uh, if I want to save the session. There. I clearly don't want to save this, so we'll just say don't save. Now, uh, let's go ahead and create a new session from a template new from template now these are all your default templates that come inbuilt and this is the one we just created you can double click it or say choose there everything is ready for me including my zoom my cycle mode my transport bar my EP over here so that's it you can save a lot of settings over here including quantize if you want automatic quantize set to 116 it will remember that the next time you save the session just remember to save it as a template there you go please remember that this is just a very small example of how to go about creating a template my template is much more intense my original template is much more intense I I would really recommend you to sit, spend time, uh, write down a list of things which is important for you in a template and customize your template accordingly. Every major DAW can be customized. Do not take what is given to you. And so this example was in logic, but uh, you can apply the same template and the same principles in any DAW of your own choice.